Hey everybody, Jonathan here. I'm with Zach of All Trades, Peterson. Hey guys. And we are driving down to Connecticut. We're having a little road trip today because we want you to meet a member of the team that you haven't met before. His name is Bruce Zimmerman, or as we like to call him. Zimmy. Right. Now Zimmy, if you watch the credits, is someone you probably have heard of. Hit it. You recognize this? You should. Yeah. Zimmy is the film composer. You guys probably don't see this a lot with YouTube videos, but we actually have every episode custom scored by a film composer named Zimmy. And he's awesome. So uh, I met him in the late 90s uh, when he sent me a, a letter out of the blue looking for work. And he was like, hey, I want to film, score some of your stuff. And right around that time, we were um, working on the pilot for Blue World. And so he ended up doing the pilot. He wrote that theme song, which has been our theme song ever since. And he's scored all the seasons. And he's also scored a bunch of other projects that uh, we've worked on, like our new IMAX film, Ancient Caves, which is coming out. So right. Zimmy is the man. He's a great, great musician. He always comes up with the perfect music for every mood. And we thought, you would enjoy getting a behind the scenes look at how he does his magic. So we're off to his studio today. And you would never expect to find a film composing studio in a quiet suburban neighborhood. <laughs> Hi, Zimmy! <Hello. laughs> Come on in! All right! So, Bruce. Your studio looks a lot like a house. That's because I work for my house. My studio is in my house. How does that go over with your wife? Uh, she doesn't like it on weekends and at night. <laughs> but during the day, she's not here anyway, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, let's go check it out. Let's go check it out. All right. Okay. All right, here let's we go. go. Ba -dum -ba -dum. Nice place you got here. Thank you. All right. Blue World helped pay for it. Yeah. Down, down. down. Ooh, this is the place. It used to be in a building in Hartford. And for years it was in Hartford. And then I decided, why pay rent and have to commute every day? Right. <clears throat> we had this basement. The kids were out of the house. Yep. It was a finished basement. But you kept the foosball table. But I kept the foosball table. That's, that's important. I mean, yeah. every studio needs it. We don't have a foosball table. What are we doing? I don't know. Yeah. And so this is... Is this, what, is this your main rig here? This is the main rig, and it's gotten smaller over the years because technology gets better. What's in there are mainly sound producing things. So a lot of the sounds that you hear on the Blue World scores yep. are from virtual instruments that are built into the computer. That's so the main. you're playing thing. most of your parts on the keyboard. I'm playing 95% of your parts on a keyboard. Even the drum parts? Even the drum parts. And I can, you know, I'll, well, I can show you, you know, as we, as we do some. Um, and then when I need a guitar, most of the time I record live guitar, of course. Not cool. all the time, but most of the time. So how, tell me about your morning. You get up in the morning. I have coffee. You have coffee. I, I do, do the crossword puzzle. Do you do spiritual puzzle. exercises to get in the mood to make music? I do. I do a crossword puzzle every morning. Okay, that stimulates that, that's your brain. That gets my brain away. Okay. That's right. Okay. Come then downstairs. What? Yep. Check my email. Very important. Go you back find up. the emails from me going, Zimmy, where's yeah, yeah, the yeah. score? Uh, take the dog for a walk. Okay. Now it's lunch. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> so far you haven't done squat all morning. I know, all I right. know. Okay. By 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm ready to go to work. Okay. But then I'm tired, so I take a nap. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. So the next day, yep. I get up and I actually get to work. Okay, it good. It takes me a day to get rolling. Okay, good. No, good. just kidding. So right. I come down after I do my crossword puzzle. Yeah. Uh, and if it's a Blue World episode, I watch the show. I, I just watch what you did, and I take notes, like what kind of a show is it? What kind of music does it need? And then I sit down, and before I write anything, I start going through my sound library, and I start looking for the kind of sounds that I want. If it's a cave diving episode, yeah. I want cool cave diving sounds. Right. If it's whales, you know, big majestic animals, I want to pull up some orchestral stuff because I want to score that way. So I try to get a good palette to start. 
because yeah. that's a different part of your brain than sitting there and actually writing the music. So, ju I mean, just recently we did the Red Sea episode. Right. And you used sort of Middle Eastern instruments that's right. a lot. So ex exactly. So before I even started to write music, I pulled up four or five instruments. I didn't use all of them, but I pulled up a bunch of things that I knew would work when I got to that point. And then I call you and I tell you what an amazing episode it is. <laughs> or what you want or, fixed. Or what I want fixed. You should all understand that <laughs> Zimmy is, one, is the first critic, pretty much, outside of our office that ever sees an episode. So, you know, we get the rough cut in position. We like it. We say, okay, it's ready for Zimmy. And we send it to Zimmy. And I always expect that I'm going to get that phone call after he watches it. And he's going to be like, Jonathan, <laughs> it's really good. But... Your beard comes and goes six times in the episode. Did you notice that continuity problem? You have a line that's really dumb. I think you should take it out. That's right. Yeah. Do we really need to see you suiting up again? That's right. <laughs> so then uh, once we work that out, yeah. and we get it all ready for you to start actually being musical. And I have my some of the instruments ready. Yeah. Then I sit down, and most of the time on Blue Worlds, I start at the beginning. I start for, in the open. On a lot of other videos, you know, really long shows, and maybe on some of our documentaries, I'll start in the middle. I'll find a scene somewhere in the middle that's really important and do that and then work out. But for these, I usually start with start at the introduction, yep. decide sort of what the th music is going to be, and then literally just kind of go through the show and score it and watch it on the, watch it on the computer, play to the picture, um, Sometimes I'll play with your narration on, sometimes off, because if it's a lot of narration and, not, and I know the scene, I'll turn the narration off so I can just watch the pictures because right. I don't need to hear it all the time. Sometimes I just get tired of hearing your voice. <laughs> My wife does. I know, his, his wife does. <laughs> say, yeah. I set you up easy for that one. That was an easy one. <laughs> that was an easy You're one. welcome, Christine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, I just go through it and it's always a lot of fun. Because I'm sitting here writing music to, to Blue World, and I'm in the water, and I'm looking at amazing creatures, and and it's just it's a great thing. I love doing them. What is your other work like? My other work is well, if you look around, you'll see a lot of kid stuff. Um, You've done a lot of. I've done a lot of like kids music, and I actually I still do a lot of kids music. I do a lot of sort of documentary work, like serious topic documentaries. I do corporate work. <laughs> Look what I found here. What's that? Well, this is an Emmy Award, and you know what it says on it? Outstanding Musical Composition, Blue World Season 3. Hello, Emmy Award winning. Hey, that's mine. Oh, Give it back. Sorry. Thank you. So, you know, what I do is watch a scene. So I'm going to watch this little scene here. The water in the spring is pretty green and a bit murky, but as we drop into the cave, it's much clearer. So I'm going to make a decision here okay, that do, instead do. of scoring do, do, do. the murky scene, because it doesn't ha it doesn't stay murky long enough. Duke wants to score. Oh, see, this is yeah. When he wants hey. to score, hey. he he comes up here when <laughs> when when he doesn't like what I'm doing. Right. And he says I can do better. He says, listen, listen. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me, but I yeah. can do this way better. Yeah, yeah. See. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now he's got to get co-composing credit. Yeah. Hey, Duke. All uh, right, you should, you should tell him to get down. All right, get down. Yeah, get, down. get down, Duke. We're doing serious yeah. grown-up work here. Yeah. Um, He's so like, no, I, you're not. So I'm not going <laughs> to score the murky section. I'm going to start where it gets clear. Why? Because the murky section only, it's not long enough. And we've done some great long murky sections where I can get very moody. Yeah. But, you know, here's the thing. Uh, you know, if I do murky for this, for this little scene, and I'll pick a... I'll pick a little, like kind of a murky sound. Look how short it is. Um, let's go back to underwater. So this is where it starts. The water in the spring is pretty green and a bit murky, but as we drop into the cave, it's much oh, clearer. I would have to change right there. And I just, I mean, I can try it, but I think it's going to be... Was that literally one note? That's one note, yeah. Are you trying to tell me that when you score our films, <laughs> uh -oh. we get like one note? Like, well, well, I can do that. No, it's it's a pad. I mean, it's just a texture. Yeah, I mean, that's a nice thing, right? <laughs> We're in the deep, dark cave. Okay, so you know what? Just <laughs> just for argument's sake, I will. I'll put I'll put a little murky bed under under the murky. The water in the spring is pretty green and a bit murky, 
but as we drop into the cave, it's much okay. clearer. So that's it. So I'm just going to leave one note there for now, because I don't want to. I don't want to get it. Now, so all right. Well, let me do a little more. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go. I have so many questions. And now I'm going to go to <laughs> where it gets much clearer, and you'll notice I have the, a marker list here. It's a cut list, basically, like on a video. I have literally the the places that I want to start a queue by time code. So when you watch the episode, you actually Create make, a marker make list. you make notes. I make notes with time code, like I oh, make, I'm going to put some music here, I'm not going to put some music there. Right. Okay. So then I can go back to it also, and then like you know, you could you might say, Zimmy, you know that score that piece that you did when we go underwater. Can you take out the something? Well, I got to know where that is, so I have everything by measure number and by uh, time code. Okay. So now I'm going to go to to the much clearer. And again, I'm going to start with a pad, and I'll explain why in a minute. If it's much clearer. See, now this is a, more of a clear pad, right? Just has a more light to it. But watch like what's going to happen. Like most caves that see a lot of divers, there's a stop sign okay. at the edge of the caverns. So what I love about this is the stop sign. So what music can do here is dramatize the fact that this is dangerous mm -hmm. and that it isn't just all fun and games. So when I get to the stop sign, now I'm going to do a really nice kind of like a stop sign at the edge of the cavern zone, warning people to go no further without kicking. I'm going to do a nice stop sign at the edge of the cavern zone, warning people to go no further without cave training and equipment. We get our cameras white balanced and follow Wayne into the darkness. Almost immediately, Wayne finds... So now what I do is I keep going back and just sort of listening to each little part that I do, just to sort of see if it's actually working. Okay. Um, so now we'll just watch this little bit that I did. The when water Duke in the played. spring is pretty green and a bit murky, but as we drop into the cave, it's much clearer. Like most caves that see a lot of divers, there's a stop sign at the edge of the cavern zone, warning people to go no further without cave training and equipment. We get our cameras white balanced and follow Wayne into the darkness. So I kind of like, you know, the general direction that it's going. Yeah. And now I'm going to do, a, you know, add a little bit of icing on the cake on the... Uh, on the stop sign, I'm going to add a little bit more to it. Stop sign at the edge of the cavern zone, warning people to go no further without... What I added was, and it's hard to hear, is a little bit of a sort of an underwater. I've, heard, I've used this sound before. It's yeah. just a nice sort of a cave, echoey kind of a, kind of a thing. I'll say that clear water pad you've been using since season one. I actually, recognize it's, that one. You know what? It's actually, it's a different pad, but it has a lot of the same uh. elements. Stop sign at the edge of the cavern zone, warning people to go no further without cave training and equipment. We get our cameras white balanced and follow Wayne into the darkness. Almost immediately, Wayne... Ah, so this is great. So here, now we come to the first critter. And I love scoring the critters because it's, I take each critter and, and I give it its own voice. You know, if it's a big sea turtle, I almost always use like a slow clarinet. Yep. If it's a, a weird exotic, you know, animal, I do something exotic. Um, my little trick for scoring tiny animals like this. This is a tiny little critter. Okay. Almost immediately, right? Wayne finds a blind cave crayfish. Look, it's a tiny little Over thing. Over thousands of right? years. Yep, so, tiny little thing. Right, so I'm going to use a tiny sound. Something that sort of matches the actual physical size of the, of, of the creature. A big animal is going to get a bigger, fatter sound. If I used a big, fat sound for this crayfish, you'd listen and go, that doesn't work. You know, why did you do that? So watch how nice it is if I just sort of score this with a sound that to me sort of sounds like what it looks like. Almost immediately, Wayne finds a blind cave crayfish. Over thousands of years living in caves, 
These little crustaceans have lost their pigment and eyesight. This species grows to about two inches, and it's only found in Florida and Georgia. Even though it can't see me filming, it can sense my presence and moves away as I get close. As we progress further into the cave, I feel... So what I'll do is feel, play with that. So play I, just, with, no, go ahead. I just noticed something. So you had that thing on record, but it was paused. It's paused and until... And then the, uh, the right. minute you hit the first note on that's the keyboard, right. it starts rolling. Right. That's a very essential sort of a film scoring tool that this that this software has in that it always just sits and waits at exactly the, the spot that I need it to okay. for me to actually trigger it. Now I'm going to also add to this because I like to add to sort of eerie anim animals a little bit a little bit of sort of an otherworldly pad to it just to, again just to increase the feeling like that we're seeing something really special. Okay. So now I'm going to add something else. Almost immediately, Wayne finds a blind cave crayfish. Over thousands of years living in caves, these little crustaceans have lost their pigment and eyesight. This species grows to about two inches, and it's only found in Florida and Georgia. Even though it can't see me filming, it can sense my presence and moves away as I get close. As we progress further into the cave, I feel like I'm swimming through an enormous piece of... Nice. Just a little angel singing. Now what I'm actually going to do is turn you off for a minute. Yeah. Because I just want to make sure that I actually played in sync with the... So I'm going to go over to the mixer. Yeah. And I'm going to turn you off. Turn off the net sound. I'm going to turn, turn, off, off, yeah. turn you off. That sounds good. I played it in yeah. sync. Sometimes so, um, if, if you're talking and I have a, a, a low, a, you know, kind of a soft arpeggio going yeah. and I play on top of it, I, don't, I can't quite hear the, the beat. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. a lot of times I'll turn you off just so that I can make sure that I'm actually playing to but, the beat. And, but this, the beat, yeah. there's no click track. There's no. no the, so you, the right. beat I'm is not, in your brain. The beat is in my brain. I rarely use a click track for Blue World because this all flows. Yeah, you know, I I don't want it to sound rigid and 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 highly synchronized. I want it to. I want the scenes to flow from one into another. In fact, you'll notice at the end of this scene, where I stopped it, I'm just going to the end of the scene. I get close. As we progress further into it, the it, cave, it, I feel it like I'm swimming through an scene. enormous piece of. Because when I start on the next scene. They'll that'll, just sort of that'll morph. Still be the, it'll one will fade decaying. out and the other one decaving. 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 Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, so that so that's basically what I do. You know, just take it a little scene by scene, and try to create a musical landscape that tells a story in a way that uh, is appropriate for the story that you're telling. Right. And now I'm going to go to the next little scene where you're swimming. So you're just swimming through a cave now. There's no, there's no action. Right. So the music really doesn't need to be big. So I'm going to combine a few things. One, sort of a slow-moving instrument that I can just sort of create waves of notes. And then I'll put something on top of it to give it a little more flow. And then we'll just see how it, see how it sounds. You're going to write with me right now, or are you going to just watch? You're going to watch? Okay. As we progress further into the cave, I feel like I'm swimming through an enormous piece of Swiss cheese. Over thousands of years, water flowing through these passages has slowly dissolved the limestone, making the passages larger and larger. We're careful not to kick up the silt on the bottom of the cave, which would ruin our visibility. leads us to a little shelf that the local divers call the pothole. This is where people have... So I'm going to stop there, even though you're still talking. We're going to go to a little period, I think, of no music. Now, Let's... why do you do that? You could score the thing wall I could just, to wall. I could score it wall to wall. The thing about when music comes out, 
is that it allows your ears to take a little rest. And then when you come in again with a fresh new piece, it creates a lot, a lot more interest. If music went all the way through, it would become wall to wall. It would be like when you're shopping and there's music playing in the background. And after a while, you don't even notice that it's going because you're, you just tune it out. So I don't want people to tune this out. And I think the score, you know, for these is evocative enough that they shouldn't be tuned out. They're part of the, what makes a Blue World episode a Blue World episode. So if I come out, even for just a few seconds. The local divers call the pothole. This is where people... I think this next scene, because now you're in a close-up and you're going to be looking at bones, I think it might be cool to just go out for that one second and now I'm going to actually look at your narration and create a new marker that starts right on your, right on your narration. And so now I know that this is where I'm going to start. This is where people have placed bones that have been found in the cave for easy inspection. Wayne holds them up, but he can't tell me what they are. So I'm not going to score this whole scene, but I'll just just to show you sort of you know, what the effect is going to be. I'm going to come in with this sound. This is where people have placed bones that have been found in the cave for easy inspection. Wayne holds them up, but he can't tell me what they are, so I'll have to wait and ask him after the dive. This one looks like a turtle shell. And this one looks like a cow. He carefully puts the bones back where they were for other divers to see. So just that, that's enough to show you that if I back up now into the scene before, what that nice little break, and it's a very small break, but it gives the ear a chance to readjust and to come in with a fresh new piece. Wayne leads us to a little shelf that the local divers call the pothole. This is where people have placed bones that have been found in the yeah. cave for easy inspection. So yeah, I could have played through that, that sentence, but then you don't get this nice change of mood right. from the nice, right. nothing's really happening, just swimming to this weird thing where now all you have, you have all these bones. The other thing is that the, when, when the music ends, it creates almost like a period at the end of a sentence. It's right. punctuation that yeah. says, that part's, over, that part's over, and this is a new part. Yeah. Without having to do anything visual, it, yeah. it just tells the audience subconsciously. Something, yeah, just, something new is Okay, that's, that's over, now we have a right. new thing. Right. And, and that's a very helpful storytelling thing. Yeah. Like, we don't have to do anything in the, in the edit. Right, because I'll, cause I'll Cause create do the punctuation. It. Right. That's right. So that is sort of how I work. That's cool. And there's, all, there's always a lot of self-editing. So once I'm done this, this whole score, I will go back, listen again, make changes, you know, add things, take things out, change the sound of an instrument, change, you know, a, a melody. You know, so by the time you get it, I've sort of probably gone over it a half a dozen times, you know, once it's been done, just to kind of keep watching it, go away, come back, watch it again, make sure that sort of with fresh ears, I like what it is. Because I have to be a really harsh critic on myself, because I don't want you coming back and going, "Boy, what was that, Zimmy? You got lazy today." You know? What was that coconut falling yeah, down yeah. the stairs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, the, <laughs> what was that? This makes it very hard to, to work when he's yeah. like this. Does he do this a lot? He does when he's like when he wants a walk or he wants lunch. He'll do this, and then uh, how do you know? And this has this been. Is, this, now I'll know when I call you up if I've got a complaint. Yeah, yeah. I'll say, yeah. I know what Duke was doing yeah, yeah, at, yeah. at uh, yeah, three yeah. minutes and 20 seconds. Yeah, that's right. He was not allowing me <laughs> to do my job. Duke was on your lap. I know. Duke, be careful of the computer, Duke. Oh, I always have to watch his butt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that is, that's basically, you know, how I do it. So there's a lot of work, as we talked about, before I even do a note, which is watching the show, learning the show, going into all my resources of instruments and starting to decide what sort of the sounds are going to be. Hmm. Now, I could do it a different way. I could go moment to moment. When I get to that crayfish, I could stop and say, all right, what does a crayfish sound like? But <laughs> it's much better for me to already have that, har that har harmonic up because I've picked it. And now when I get to the crayfish, I can just keep writing. You don't have to 
I don't have to stop in the right. middle of get out of the zone. Get out of the zone of writing. Right, right, right. And say, all right, now what instrument am I going to use? So that is how I cool. score Blue World. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our latest episode all the way to the end. You're crazy if you don't subscribe. Hit that subscribe button now so you won't miss our next episode. And check out our merch link in the description for some Blue World swag.